issue of blood and we pray for a release of virtue in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let the glory of the Lord reside here in this sanctuary. Let the glory of the Lord sit upon the minstrels. Let the glory of the Lord exude from the mouth of those who sing the songs. Let the glory of the Lord embody the man of God who will preach the word. We pray that the glory not only be here in the sanctuary, but let the glory go across the airwaves. Let the glory touch men and women. Let the glory touch grown smokes. Let the glory touch the grandmothers and the grandfathers. Let the glory of the Lord release into the homes in the name of Jesus. Let the glory of the Lord touch your children. Let the glory of the Lord touch every millennial. We declare the glory of the Lord is strong. We declare the strength of the glory rises even now. We declare that every low down head must raise up in Jesus' name. Depression is gone in the glory of God. Sickness is abolished in the glory of God. We thank you for your glory, oh God. We thank you for your glory tonight, oh God. We bless you tonight. Glory, 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 glory. Declare the glory in your home. Declare the glory in your office. Declare the glory in your car. Declare the glory in your family. Let the glory rise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God arise and let his enemies be scattered. Let God's glory arise.
Just because you know he's an amazing God. Hallelujah. We bless him. Come on, let's sing it, family. Sing any day now. Any day now. Any day now. God will do what he said he would do.
this thing called now or later. You know what? God says, I want to bless you now and I want to bless you later. If you receive your right now blessing, I dare you to hollow from wherever you are right now. Right now. Right. Right now. Right now. Right now. Though the vision tarry, wait for it because it's coming than you think. Somebody write in the chat sooner than you think. Sooner than you think. Sooner than you think. All the praises in this particular space right now. Just holler sooner. Sooner. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, family. We are so blessed to be at group therapy tonight because I believe that something supernatural is getting ready to happen not only in this studio, but from wherever you're watching, sitting, or standing from, God is getting ready to meet you where you are. There is no distance in the spirit, and I want you right now to tag somebody. I want you to tell somebody that new birth is live, and the praise is going up, and his blessings are coming down. I'm Pastor Kylie Slimmons, and I want to thank you for being a part of this worship experience with us on behalf of our senior pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant, we are so glad and appreciative that you decided to worship with us this evening. Why don't you invite someone to be a part tonight? I tell you this, God is on the throne and the devil is mad about it because your blessing is still on the way. Would you do me a favor? Would you just release your hands from whatever you're doing? And I just want you to touch yourself. I want you to touch yourself and say, self God's going to bless me. How do I know? Because I'm still here. You are still here. And that's how you know that God has a right now blessing for you. I don't know what you're experiencing. I don't know what you're facing. But I want you to know, don't doubt God in this season. Because God has a right now blessing for you. Not just Kairos, but but not just Kronos, but Kairos. There's a, a right now. It's a seasonal thing. Family, I want to encourage you tonight. I want to challenge you in your tithes and your offering to sow even now. As God has been good to you, I want you to remind yourself and show a sign of gratitude to God. God, I thank you for continuously blessing me with manna from on high. 
Today, I want to honor you with all that you've given me through my income and my increase. And I want to sow into the kingdom of God because, God, you didn't decide to bless me later, but you've been good to me even right now. Family and friends, I want to challenge you to sow even tonight. I want you to grab well, the significant seed in your hand. Why don't you do me a favor? Why don't you get a seed of $30 in your hand if you've already given your tithes and your offering and you just want to sow something? I want you to get a seed in your hand. I want you to see our giving prompts, which are below you. I want you to know that it is safe, it is swift, and it is secure, and it will rebound a supernatural harvest back into your life. I want you to see those prompts, and I want you to ask God, God, how would you purpose for me to give? But also, as you're giving, I want you to be mindful of this giving season that we are in. We are in a season of covenant bond with God. How many of you can say by a show of hands in the room and by a show of faith online that, God, I thank you for the covenant that you have over me. I thank you for the covenant that you have over my family. Tonight, family and friends, I want to challenge you to be a part of this particular giving campaign that we are in. God is calling you to be an agent of change. And today, I want you to purpose in your heart, God, how do you want me to be a part of the October 24th above giving Sunday. God, I give my tithes, I give my offering, but just as much as I expect you to do exceeding abundantly above all that I could dream, ask, or even imagine, I am also believing, God, that I'm going to do exceeding above or even what I can't imagine in my seed sowing for that particular day. Today, family and friends, I want to challenge you. If you want to sow a seed of $7,000 on October 24th, you can make that pledge now. If you want to sow a seed of seventeen hundred dollars you can make that pledge now if you want to sow a seed of seven hundred dollars you can make that pledge now or maybe you say I want to sow a seed of seventy dollars and for all of my young people maybe you want to sow a seed of seven dollars God is saying it's not equal giving it's equal sacrifice if you want to be a part of this giving moment I want to encourage you to go to we are new birth backslash bond 700 or if you don't have your website, but you do have your phone readily available for you, I want to encourage you to go to texting to 71441-NB-BOND-700. Family, God has called this ministry to do a great work. We have a great vision and a great visionary. And we want you to help us advance the gospel of Jesus Christ. I believe that you're going to help us do it. And I want to thank you in advance for being a part of this particular giving moment. Because as you give to God, he gives back to you good measure, pressed down, shaking together, and running over. If you're ready to receive this next moment of worship, I just want you to write in the chat, yes, Lord. If you are ready to receive what God has for you, I want you to write, yes, Lord. Lord, as those who have given in this moment, we thank you for their spirit of obedience. And we thank you for the doors that you're getting ready to open in their life. Father, we rebuke the devourer. And we ask you, God, to open up that very window of heaven and pour out a blessing that they don't have enough room to receive. If you receive this prayer, you know that God is getting ready to bless every area of your life. Someone say amen. Good evening, everybody. We're so glad that you're streaming with us tonight. You have come to the right place at the right time. And there's a right word for you tonight. I don't know what it is, but the atmosphere here is so strong. Any kind of blessing is liable to happen tonight. Not just here, but right where you are. The presence of the Lord is there. And I'm so glad that you're in the presence. And God has something so special for you tonight. Tonight, we're missing our pastor being here. We love our pastor at New Birth. We have the best pastor. He is Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. And wherever you are, give it up for our pastor. Pastor, we know you're watching. We love you. We appreciate you. We pray God's greatest blessings upon you. May the glory of the Lord increase on you and the anointing of the Lord continually fall upon you. And so we know how strong he preaches in the pulpit. And he's away preaching tonight, but listen, he didn't leave this pulpit uncovered. It's like when you were in school, remember when you had a really good teacher? And then sometimes that teacher wouldn't be there. And you'd say, oh, shucks, we got a substitute. But tonight, let me tell you, the substitute tonight has the word for your life. 
the substitute tonight has the oil that you need the substitute tonight came loaded fully with e equipped with what you need in your life and you don't want to miss not one moment of what he has to bring and so after we have another worship song we're we're going to hear the word of the lord from the man of god who's going to stand in his own shoes and in his own right he's going to come and give us what heaven has for us to know his name is bishop kevin long let's hear it for the man of god he's a pastor pastor of temple church international in charlotte north carolina author mentor bishop community leader social activist he is a man on fire he's the man of the word and with the water and the bread tonight and so we're going to receive what god has and tonight we declare that the blessings are falling on you because God always keeps his promises and his word is bond. Tiffany, praise team, come on, take us higher and set our hearts aflame so we can receive the word of the Lord tonight. Thank you, Lord. Can you just put words of worship into the atmosphere now? Come on, every hand lifted, even if you're at home. Let's speak well of him. God, we bless you. We honor you. We magnify your name. There is no one greater than you. You're awesome in all of your ways, and we worship you. Thank you for being our provider tonight. Let's sing it together, family. I have everything. Come on. That's right, you can declare it too. I have I everything have I need. Everything Thank you, Lord. Come on, let's do it together. I have everything I, I need. Have everything and this is why the great I am provides for me. I am yeah. Provides for That's it. The great I am provides for me. Provides let's do the next verse. Come on, you are my strength when I am weak. You are my strength when I am. Come on, let's lift it up. You are my strength. You are my strength when I am when weak. I yes, am. Lord. Thank you for being strength in our weakest hour tonight, you God. You're our strength when, when we are weak. That's it. The great I am. The great I am. He provides for. Provides Thank you, Lord. The greater I am. Yeah. Come on, let's do it. The greater I am. That I am. He is everything. And he's everything to me. Come on, the greater I am. For me, so let's declare 
of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed. His compassions they fail not. They are new every morning. Great is the Lord's faithfulness unto us. The songs of the, the words of the song ring true. He is the great I am. Everything that we need God is. It is in him that we live and move and have our being and apart from him we can do nothing. Outside of him we are nothing but with him all things are possible. And in him, we are complete. It's good to be alive. And it's better to be alive and to be saved. And so we greet you with the apostolic greeting of the Apostle Paul. Grace and peace be unto you. From God our Father in Jesus Christ, our Lord, his Son, our risen and soon to return conquering King. God is still on the throne. The devil is still defeated. And God is exalted in Jesus is Lord. Somebody ought to shout hallelujah in this place. I want to take this moment to uh, say thank you and to honor uh, in, his, uh, in his absence the angel of this house, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Would you please help me to celebrate him? My friend and my brother of many years, we go all the way back to when we both had twists and were wearing dashikis. And, uh, and uh, now we both have more hair on our face than we have on our head. I, it is an honor and a privilege to have the testimony that uh, I have been able to share in intimate space uh, with your leader. So much so that um, we have laughed together, cried together. We have confided in one another. And the truth of the matter is what we shared stayed with the other person. And it's good to have friends like that. I was thinking today as I was riding here how appropriate and uh, providential it is of God uh, that uh, some 60 years ago, a Morehouse man became um, uh, the symbol and leader of the civil rights movement. And now here in 2021, some 60 years later, another Morehouse man is leading and walking in the footsteps of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. New birth, you ought to be thankful and grateful that you don't just have a pastor of your house, you have a pastor of a nation. One who leads and one who walks in power and authority. And we're so thankful for the life and ministry of Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Also, I would be remiss if I did not honor the legacy of my namesake. Uh, yes, I am Bishop Kevin Long, Kevin L. Long at that. And uh, I stand in the place that is a monument uh, and a testament to the ap apostleship of Bishop Eddie L. Long. Um, I don't have the physique that he had. He was a little well better built than I am. Um, my church is not as big as his is. My anointing is not as heavy. But I still take honor and pride that I'm carrying on the preaching legacy of the Long family. And so we honor God for him. Thank those who are with us here from Charlotte, uh, Elder Troy Barnes. Uh, my son in ministry in whom I'm well pleased drove drove me here and uh, it's understood that if you drive me here you got to drive me back my daughter my pumpkin the only one I got I got three heads of cheering but uh, my daughter lives here in Lithonia and uh, she 
and uh, the fellow that I decided that I would finally let be called her boyfriend, uh, they share with us tonight. Uh, Chanel Pumpkin, will you just raise your hand? Bro, Rob, will you raise your hand? So glad to see both of you. Genesis chapter number eight. Genesis chapter number eight. Chapter nine. Genesis chapter number nine. We will cover verse chapter eight, seven, and six. So I would that you would keep your Bible open as we share tonight in this time of therapeutic, uh, therapeutic sharing. Um, Genesis chapter number nine. I have been given the assignment uh, to share tonight from uh, one of the six covenants. Um, your leader has uh, given me explicit instructions, did not want me to be over the, all over the place. And so because he knows his brother, if he don't tell me what to do, I'm liable to do anything. So I'm following tonight his instruction, Genesis chapter 9. What about tonight's worship experience? The hospitality here at New Birth has been great, yet you have wooed and wowed and entertained God uh, in a way that he is pleased to the best church anywhere uh, in the world other than Atlanta, Georgia. Now, I'm going to change that after I drop this mic. It'll be the best church anywhere. But because we are here sharing tonight and we want to maintain and keep the harmony and peace, I will say to the best church anywhere other than Atlanta, Temple Church International, I see y'all watching. I thank God for you and I honor you tonight. Uh, I want to look at, again, Genesis chapter number nine, uh, and I want to begin reading, if I can, Genesis chapter number nine. I want to begin reading at verse number eight. I want to read through verse number 11, and then I will commence reading again at verse 20 and in at verse 25. Genesis chapter number nine, beginning, if I can, at verse number eight. If you have it, say amen. If you're still looking, say, Lord, help. If you ain't trying to find it, say, go on and read, preacher. <laughs> Genesis chapter number nine, verse number eight. Tell him I'll call him back. Genesis chapter nine, verse number eight. Then God said to Noah and to his sons, I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you. And with every living creature that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. Drop down with me, if you will, to verse number uh, 20. And the word of the Lord says, Noah, a man of the soil, proceeded to plant a vineyard. When he drank some of its wine, he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent. Ham, the father of Canaan, saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside. But Shem and Jepheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders then they walked in backward and covered their father's naked body. Their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father naked. When Noah awoke from his wine and found out what his youngest son had done to him, he said, cursed be Canaan, the lowest of slaves, will he be to his brothers. And verse number 28 will conclude our reading and 29 after the flood. Noah lived 350 years. Noah lived a total of 950 years. Then he died. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this time that we have to share your word from which we share. Thank you for these, your precious people with whom you've afforded me the opportunity to share from your word with. It is my prayer tonight that you would let revelation knowledge flow. Share your heart, reveal your mind in any blessing, any way you bless us, we will be satisfied. I yield myself to you now. I ask you to think through my mind, speak through my mouth, move through my body, that these your people might be edified, that uh, uh, you might be glorified, and that the enemy of our f 
future and the foe of our existence, Satan himself, might be horrified. It is in Jesus' name we pray and we boldly declare the devil is defeated. God, you are exalted. Jesus, you are Lord. And all who agree with the prayer of the man of God shouted hallelujah. Amen. And thank you, Jesus. God says in his word before you are seated, he says in his word to Noah, I now establish a covenant with you. And the covenant is this. Never again will there be a flood like this. When you tell somebody beside you, I'll never go through this again. You told the wrong person. They didn't get excited. Tell somebody else, say, neighbor, you'll never go through this again. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I'll never go through this again. Good evening. My brothers and my sisters, August 29, 2005 is a day that undoubtedly will be forever indelibly etched in the minds of those of us who were alive at the time. And it is a date that is irreversibly engraved in the memoirs of U.S. and world history. For five days, the Gulf Coast had been savagely assaulted by the gale force winds and torrential rains of the hurricane that the World Meteorological Organization named Katrina. As you well know, the city of New Orleans was the focal point of news and media attention because the levee system was breached. I don't mean in such your intelligence, but to bring us up to speed and set some context for our discussion tonight, I want to say to you that a levee is a natural or man-made wall that is intended to block water from going where we don't want it to go. But on that fateful day, all 50 of the levees are around the city of New Orleans seemingly simultaneously broke, creating what was arguably the most horrifying natural disaster on U.S. soils. In real time, we witnessed a chaotic and catastrophic calamity that caused over 600,000 households to be displaced and that turned the Superdome into a makeshift homeless shelter. We watched bewildered people wading through murky mosquito infested waters, seeking safety and asylum from the wrath of mother nature. And worst of all, 1,836 unfortunate persons took their last breath and left their family, friends, and entire nation, and even the whole world to mourn their inauspicious and untimely deaths. Are you listening? In a press conference, Ray Nagan, who at that time of critical crisis served as the mayor of New Orleans, dressed and addressed the media and announced and assured all who watched that the one or one of the first orders of business in restoring the Big Easy back to its once vibrant state was to rebuild the levee system even stronger so that the city would never have to go through that tragedy again. Fast forward 16 years to the date, August 29, 2021, Hurricane Ida hit the Gulf Coast, inclusive of New Orleans. And true to the prophetic promise of Mayor Reagan, the levees held up and the city was spared the destruction and devastation that uh, Katrina wreaked in 2005. Tonight, my brothers and my sisters, for our uh, therapy session, I would have you to consider the words of the promise and covenant spoken by God to Noah in verse number 11 of our text. Says God to the prophet, never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood that will destroy the earth. I would like to suggest to us tonight, New Birth, uh, that Noah is both an icon and an enigma. He's an icon because he is symbolic of faith in God and faithfulness to his God-given assignment. You know Noah's story. God walks up into his space 
And he says to him, he says, I need you to build an ark. He gives him the dimensions by which he should build. He tells him the material that he should use. Yet without a pattern, uh, point of reference, or prototype that precedes the building of the ark, he builds something that he has never built or has never been built before. And being under the stress of not having a stated deadline, he works until it is finished. Noah has this assignment from God to do something that no one has ever done. He has this assignment from God to build something that has never been built. And God does not tell him when the project will be finished. He does not know when it will rain. He does not know when the skies will open. All he knows is that God said it and he did it. I don't know who I'm talking to in here tonight, but maybe there's someone under the sound of my voice who's much like Noah. God has been dealing with you and talking to you about some stuff that there is no pattern, no prototype. There is no product that exists now that gives you a guideline to build it. And he is not giving you a deadline, so you seem to be building without any benefit of knowing when it's going to be finished. I'm talking to somebody in here who has had to start and start over again. I'm talking to somebody in here who has had to alter and augment some things that you were doing. And the enemy is trying to make you believe that your work is in vain. If I had time, I know this is a therapy session, but I'd holler at you and I'd let you know the devil is a liar. And the reason it's taking you so long and the reason you keep rising and falling, missing it and getting back on track is because God wants you to understand that he's still working on you while you're working on it. I wish you would tell somebody beside you, God's still working on me while I'm working on it. Not only is he an icon, but he is an enigma. He's an enigma because he lives in a society that is marked by gratuitous violence and pervasive widespread corruption. He was in it, but he was not of it. The word of God declares that God saw Noah. He chose him and Noah found favor in his sight. That he was walking in a way that those who were his contemporaries were not. That he was moving in a direction with God. That he was by faith putting one foot in front of the other. Not knowing what the next step would be or the next thing would be that would happen. But he walked with God anyway. That is not to suggest that Noah was perfect. He wasn't perfect but he was different. The record shows that he was given to a proclivity that led him beyond his personal safe limits. And it also shows that the trait of his family dysfunction he inherited from Adam, uh, it existed in his family. I read the text. You heard it in your hearing. It was that he was given to wine and not just wine, much wine. He went past his limits. He got drunk. And we understand that his son Ham as we read in the text uncovered his nakedness which would suggest that either he slept with his own mother or worse yet he raped his father while he was asleep he was given to dysfunction I'm talking whether y'all want me to or not there was dysfunction in his family he was flawed he was faulty he was messed up he was jacked up but he was different in Genesis chapter 6 verse number 9 we find out that Noah walked with God. In Genesis 6 and 22 the record shows that Noah worked with God and in Genesis chapter 8 verse number 20 the record shows that Noah worshiped God. I don't know who I'm talking to in here tonight but I believe there's somebody who's under the sound of my voice who will admit that I'm not perfect but I walk with God. I 
believe there's somebody under the sound of my voice who says I never claim to be perfect but I am different who are all the different people in here who who are the people in under the sound of my voice who understand that there's something about you that sets you aside characterizes you and categorizes you in a different category from other people I wish you would just touch yourself talk to yourself and say I'm not perfect but I'm different I'm flawed but I walk with God I'm messed up but guess what I work with God I got chinks in my armor I'm blemished but I worship God where are my people who are different in this place I need about 10 of y'all in here who don't mind lifting your hands watch this and worshiping God because out of everything you are and everything you are not that you are different you walk with God you work with God and you worship God where are my people who walk with them work with them and worship him for the next 15 seconds I need somebody to open your mouth and worship God with everything you have in you somebody throw your head back and shout I'm different and so it is my brothers and my sisters because Noah is different because Noah walks with God he works with God and he worships God the text says that God enters into a covenant with Noah might I say a few things to you before I close the lesson to help us to understand how significant and how integral this particular covenant is the first thing we understand by way of comparison and contrast is this that the covenant that God makes from Noah with Noah differs from the covenant that he makes with Moses and with Abraham and with David with Moses Abraham and David every covenant is to them and to their descendants but notice that the covenant that God makes with Noah is not just for him and his descendant but God says Noah because you're different because you work with me because you walk with me and because you worship me not only am I going to enter into a covenant with you and your descendants but I'm going to enter into a covenant with the entire earth never again will I destroy the earth in the way that I destroyed it the last time y'all miss what I'm saying he said Noah you are so bad you are so stuck with me you are so in tune with with my purpose and my plan for your life that I'm not just going to make a covenant with you I'm not just going to make a covenant with your family but I'm going to make a covenant with your entire environment that might not mean anything to you until you understand that when you are different somebody shout different when you walk with God and work with God and worship God God says not only will you and your family be blessed but whatever atmosphere and an environment that you and your family are in I'm going to make sure that you are protected and covered I thought I was at new birth tonight I said I said I said I said God said because you're different I'm making not only a covenant with you but I'm making a covenant with everything that surrounds you so that anything that tries to overcome and overtake you that tries to come in your space and take you down and take you out it won't work I will some Somebody will just lift your hands and begin to give God glory. Watch this. Because not only are you and your family protected, but wherever you go, you have divine protection, divine provision, and divine providence. I wish somebody would shout, yes, Lord. Come in, David. Help me to preach it for a minute. Yay! Though I walk through the valley and the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. Why? Because God is with me. Lift your hands. Open your mouth and shout yes Lord so the night I came I came with these next few minutes I got left to talk to somebody who needs to hear this word and the word for you if you will receive it is whatever you've been through you'll never go through it again I, I, 
I, I, don't, I don't know what you've been up against. I don't know what you've been experiencing. I, I, don't, I don't know what, you've, what trials you've had. But God sent me all the way from Charlotte, North Carolina to say that whatever it is, you'll never go through this again. Encourage yourself and say, self, I'll never go through this again. Well, my brothers and my sisters, there are three things I want to share with you, and I'm going to get out your way. Number one, those of you who receive this word, let me see the hands of those of you who receive it. Those of you who receive this word, the first thing God wants me to drop on you, somebody shout, drop it on us. First thing I want to drop on you is that God says to you that you'll never have to lose yourself again in order to save other people. Okay. <laughs> God says to Noah, Noah, because you're different, because you walked with me and worked with me and stayed committed to worshiping me, you'll never have to lose yourself again to save somebody else. All right, all right, all right, all right. When God gave me this word, it kind of befuddled me too. So I asked the Lord, where does it come from? It's in the text. For the text says in verse number 20, y'all got to catch this. In verse number 20, the word of God declares, Noah was a man of the soil and he proceeded to plant a vineyard. Notice this, catch this, listen to me, please. It says that Noah was a man of the soil. He was not a builder, nor was he a zoologist, but he was a farmer. But God assigned him to do something outside of his comfort zone and something outside of his skill set for the sake of facilitating the divine purpose and will of God. For 120 years, uh, Noah built an ark day after day, not knowing the deadline, not knowing when rain would come, never having a point of reference of what this kind of rain would look like. And then when he finished for 218 days, Noah stayed cramped up with his family and all manners of livestock, air dwellers, and land creepers for 200 for 120 years, 120 and a half years to be exact. Noah has to work outside of his comfort zone. He has to do something that he is not designed to do, but he has to do it that he might take care of others. Y'all got to catch this. God have mercy. Here is what the word declares that after the flood, after the water receded, after the coast was clear, after he said this, now you can come out of the ark. Now you can now leave the place where you were trapped, taking care of animals that sleep where they eat and relieve themselves where they sleep and eat. He said, now you've been caught in a stinky situation, dealing with other people's mess, dealing with other people's stuff. He said, but now that you've been faithful to your assignment, I'm giving you permission to get back to doing what you love and to return to yourself. Y'all miss what I said. Because he is faithful, because he is he is working and walking and worshiping God because he has completed his assignment God said no longer do you have to forsake yourself so that you can take care of others I see I ain't preaching to all of y'all but I believe that might be about 20 people in here who have gone through a season where you had to lose yourself to take care of other people where you had to give up what you wanted to help other people survive but God told me to tell you tonight that it's time for you to get back to you am I talking to anybody in here who says I'm different and because I'm different because I'm committed to walking with and working with and worshiping God even in the midst of dark and dirty and stinking times I feel a release in my spirit to get back to the me that I used to be who am I talking to in here tonight lift your hands open your mouth 
and shout I'm getting back to me and the text says text says that Noah a man of the soil after 120 years could get back to planting again he sowed a seed, grape seed, and produce the vine. Number two, I got to get out of here. Number two, y'all all right? Y'all with me? Number two, God wants you to understand, and this is for about 17 of y'all in here under the sound of my voice who will receive it. He says, never again will you experience the pain of the vulnerability of betrayal without having the benefit of authentic, victorious covering. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me say this again. God said, because you're different. <laughs> God says, because you walk with me, work with me, and worship me. He says, I promise you that never again will you experience the pain of the vulnerability of betrayal without the benefit of authentic victorious covering where I get it from is in the text text says somebody ought to shout the text says the text says in verse number 22 y'all gotta catch this new birth TCI I see y'all y'all gotta catch it the word of God says that after Noah planted the vineyard after he waited six to nine months for the vineyard to produce grapes and after he crushed the grapes and allowed them to ferment so that they would have content uh, that would do what wine does the bible says he drank and when he drank some of its wine he became drunk and lay uncovered inside his tent and then verse 22 says his son ham who is the father of canaan saw his father naked and told his two brothers outside oh god and when he told his brothers that his father was laying naked the text says somebody shot the text says that his other two sons shem and jepheth took a garment and laid it across their shoulders and then they walked back and covered their father's body their faces were turned the other way so that they would not see their father's nakedness ham the middle boy ham the boy who was the beneficiary of his father's obedience to God in building the ark because remember now Noah did not just build the ark for Noah Noah built the ark for him and his family and the livestock Ham saw his father build Ham was saved by what his father built and still he betrayed him the text says somebody shout the text says he uncovered his father's nakedness in his time of vulnerability Noah got drunk he had a little too much to drink he got beside himself he went to sleep and at his most vulnerable and his weakest moment Ham decided that he was going to uncover his father's nakedness he decided that he was going to take the occasion to embarrass the one who had built the ark that had saved his life and to embarrass the one who saved not only him but his entire family but in the midst of the betrayal and the covering the text says that Jephthah and Shem they covered Noah I don't know who I'm preaching to but there's somebody under the sound of my voice who has the testimony that there are people that I helped in their worst seasons who have turned around and hurt me and kick me when I'm down there are people that I lifted when they were going through their circumstances and storms who when I went through my storm they took that occasion watch this to not only leave me but took that occasion
vision to try to defang me. God told me to tell those of you under the sound of my voice that God said in this next season, I can't promise you that you won't be betrayed. But what I can promise you is I'm bringing people into your life who will cover you in the midst of all that you go through. Who am I talking to in here who knows the pain of betrayal? Come here, Jesus. Help me to preach it. For three and a half years, I taught, I tutored, I mentored, I fed Judas. And when the ball dropped, when it all boiled down, it was the very one that I helped that betrayed me. But God told me to tell somebody in here, he used the betrayal to put you in a position that you can go to the next level. And God said in this next season, I'm surrounding you with people who understand covenant and who will cover you in the midst of the battle. Who am I talking to in here tonight? Wave at me, tell me, go ahead and preach. God told me to tell somebody tonight that because you've been faithful, because you're different, he's getting ready to put folk in your space that understand your plight and who will cover you in the midst of battle. Somebody ought to shout yes, Lord. Somebody ought to shout yes, Lord again. Can I say this before I move forward? Mr. Organ Man, I'll get there in a minute. Can I say this before I move forward? I need somebody to understand that what God did is he woke Noah up. Ah, God, somebody needs to hear me tonight. God said it's time for everybody who's faithful, everybody who's a worker, a walker, and a worshiper of God. He said it's time for you to wake up and get up out of your drunkenness and your stupor. And God said to tell you that now you can have the assurance that Noah had. For the word declares that when Noah awoke from his drunkenness, he said, curse be Canaan. You got to understand that Canaan is Ham's son. So that when Ham, when he uncovered Noah, the Bible says that Canaan cursed his future. Y'all miss what I said. I said when he uncovered Noah, the Bible declares that Ham cursed his future. God told me to tell you that there's such a heavy and special anointing on your life that the people who are cursing you in your present, they are cursing their future. I want you to wave at your neighbor, say neighbor, I got my word already. I've been betrayed. I've been sold out. I've been talked about. I've been mistreated. I've been in a vulnerable spot and been misused when I was there. But God said anybody that does that to you, anybody that does that to me is cursing their future. Touch not the Lord's anointed. I wish you would wave at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I'm anointed and I'm not to be touched. Touch somebody else and say, I'm anointed and I'm not to be touched. Touch yourself and say, I'm anointed and I am not to be touched. This is the wrong season for somebody to mess with you because you have found favor with God and whoever has God's favor always comes out on top. Lift your hands, open your mouth and shout, yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Number one. Number one. Number one. And I'm closing. Number one. You, you, you never go through this again. Because God wants you to understand that you never have to lose yourself again. Lose yourself again. Trying to save other people. Number two, God said you'll never experience the pain of the vulnerability of betrayal without the benefit of authentic victorious covering. But then number three, uh, y'all please, uh, y'all shout with me on this next point, uh, even if you ain't feeling it, fake it, uh, so we can praise together. Uh, but, But number three, number three, God told me to tell those of you who will receive it, never again will the floods interrupt your life. All right. All right. Let let me say that again. Uh, God says, God says, because you're different, uh, uh, because you walk with me, you work with me, and you worship me, 
He said, never again will the floods interrupt your life. I'm not making it up. It's right here in the text. For the word of God declares in verse number 28 that after the flood, y'all got to catch this, Noah lived 350 years. Um, okay. After it was all over. Mm -hmm. <laughs> After he finished his assignment. After he took care of those that he was assigned to. Hmm. After he survived and recovered from the betrayal of Ham, he lived 350 more years. That may not mean anything to you until you consider Noah's narrative because he was 600 years old when he began to build. Oh, he was 600 when the flood actually came. Okay, y'all missed this. He spent 120 years building. Mm -hmm. uh, he is now 600 years old. He spends 218 days holed up with animals and family that he has been assigned to take care of. He comes out. He plants a vineyard. He gets drunk. He gets taken advantage of. He wakes up and God says, I'm getting ready to reward you. Watch this. With half of your lifespan that you've already lived. Y'all missed it. He was 601 years old when he came off of the ark. God extended his life by 350 years because God said, I will never allow you to put more time in serving me than I'm going to put in time blessing you. <laughs> Uh, they got it over here, over here. I'm sorry. Mic check, mic check. One, two, one, two. Is there anybody who hears me over here? I said, God wants you to understand. Oh, I hope my brother is watching tonight from London, England. God wants you to understand, bro, that God will never allow you to put in more time walking with him, working with him, and worshiping him than he's going to put in blessing you for doing whatever it is you have done for him. For the word of God declares in Hebrews chapter 12 that God is not unfaithful to forget your labor of love that you have shown and continue to show and you do it in his name y'all miss what I said God said the last flood that hit your life is the last flood that was going to hit your life he said because you've been faithful because you weathered the storm because you walk with me when it looked like walking was not paying off Come on, Mr. Organ Man. I'm ready to go now. Because you kept doing what I told you to do. Because you stood when nobody else would stand. Because you loved when those who hated you hated you. Because you did good to those who despitefully used you. God said, I'm getting ready to usher you into a season where blessing upon blessing upon blessing is going to overtake your life. And God told me to preach to about 13 of y'all in here to let you know that this time the levees will not break. Wave at your neighbor and sing neighbor. This time the levees will not break. Isaiah said when you walk through the fire you won't be burned and when you walk through the flood you will not be drowned. 
Ezekiel said when the spirit when the enemy comes in like a flood the spirit of the Lord will raise up a standard a standard against him I want to close the lesson by telling you what one writer said he said that when you consider what happened in Hurricane Katrina what really happened was not what the enemy intended the enemy intended for the flood to break their faith in God but the the opposite actually happened it said instead of their faith getting weak their faith in God got stronger and I believe tonight I'm talking to somebody who says everything I've been through it did not break me it built me up it did not make me bitter it made me better it did not make me lose my mind but it helped me to develop the mind of Christ and when I look around and think things over after all I've been through I can truly say that I've been blessed I got a testimony wave at somebody across the room and say neighbor neighbor I got a testimony can I go higher tell one more neighbor say neighbor I've been through the fire and I've been through the flood I've been broken into pieces seen lightning flashing from above but through it all I remember that God loved me and God cares and he promised he promised he promised he promised he wouldn't put more on me than I I can bear look at one more neighbor and say neighbor the reason I sing is because I'm happy the reason I sing is because I'm free and out of everything that I've been through in my life his eye is on the sparrow and I know he watches me saying what you wanna do what you please but my heart is fixed my mind made up hey I'm blessed in this season and I declare before the Lord before my friends before my enemies and before the devil I'll never go through this through this again I know you can't touch each other I know you can't run around and get in each other's face but turn to somebody that you know has been through trials tribulation heartaches heartbreaks let down and disappointment point your finger and prophesy and say neighbor God told me to tell you that you won't go through this ever again yes you won't go through this mess through this stress through this headache through this heartache through this confusion ever again God promised that now you can move and live life to its fullest one more thing somebody grab this promise for every year that God allowed you to go through a flood he's getting ready to cause you to ride on the victory the victory count of your deliverance shout yeah shout yeah shout yes shout yeah shout yes shout yeah shout yes shout yeah I'm sorry for hollering. I know you don't want your therapist to holler at you. But God told me to tell somebody tonight that whatever your this is, you'll never go through this again. It's a promise to every worshiper. 
to everyone who despite it all walks with God. You stumbled, you fell, you got back up seven times. Does a righteous man fall seven times? Does he rise again? And for everyone who will work with God, he said, you'll never go through this again. Lift your hands in this place tonight. Father, for every hand lifted, I pray that this word would manifest in his or her life. I pray that they would understand, God, that even on this 28th day of September, they stepped out of the flood and into an unprecedented favor. God touched them about their minds that they might understand that this season is their season of newness, their season of victory, their season of breakthrough. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Listen, my brother, my sister, and those of you who are watching, tonight I feel compelled to challenge you to give. I need to know that the people of God receive the word. No, notice what Noah did. The text says that as soon as he came out, he worshiped, then he sold. He came out, he worshiped, and he sold. I believe in tonight that there are few people who are either in this room or perhaps there are few people who are online who tonight feel motivated. There are 400 of you who are watching tonight. And here's what I want to do. I believe tonight that there are at least 10 people who are watching or who are in the room that can sow a seed of $1,000. And then I believe that tonight there are at least a hundred people who can sow a seed of 100. Tonight, as the giving information is placed on the screen, and I'm talking to you, you know who you are. This word was tailor-made for you. This, this word spoke to you. This word was the word that you needed because you thought that the flood would never stop. You thought that you would never get out of or delivered from that cramped in situation. But the Lord said tonight, if it is your word, I need you to sow. Then the rest of you tonight, the word of God declares, I hear him speaking tonight. The rest of you tonight, sow a seed of $50 or come as closely to 50 as you can. I'm going to relinquish this mic now, but the other thing that I want to tell you is this. Botanists say that when a grapevine produces fruit, it produces at least 100 grapes. In each grape, there is a seed. It says that that one vine can produce 10 bottles of wine. Wine in the Bible represents joy. And the Lord has me to challenge you tonight to sow a seed, watch this, that will produce seed that will increase your joy from here on out. I want to pray over you, your seed. Father, in Jesus' name, there are many who are watching. First of all, I ask you to heal their minds and heal their bodies and their spirits, whatever it is they've been through, whatever it is they've experienced. Do as you did, Noah. Manifest your promise on their lives because, God, they did what it was you assigned them to do in the midst of the pain, the heartache, the disappointment, and the like. But then secondly, Father, I want you to move on the hearts of those who understand the power of their seed. The power of their seed to produce a harvest that will produce joy that will be continual and that will be perpetual, that will overflow into the next season of their lives. Bless your people according to first their willingness and then secondly their desire in jesus name we pray amen god bless you thank you so much my time is up i appreciate you for yours
Come on, New Birth, would you put your hands together and help me thank the Lord for the man of God and for that word that we have heard tonight. Now, wherever you happen to be, I want to let you know that the blessing that he's talking about is available for you. You have to take the time tonight to bond with the covenant-keeping God who will bless your life regardless of what you've gone through. And according to this word tonight, the Lord wants me to let you know you will never go through this again. Am I talking to anybody who's had the levees break in your life? Have you ever gone through the flood? Well, aren't you glad to know tonight that God says it'll never happen again? Because when we look at the blessing that comes from the covenant-keeping God in Genesis chapter number 17, I want to use God's blessing as a benediction over your life tonight, regardless of what has happened in your past. I want you to remember God says, I will bless you. I don't care what you lost and what you don't have now. Stand on the promise. God says, I will multiply you. I don't care what you are lacking. You get up and walk in faith. God says, I will increase you. God says, I will change your nature from bad to good. I will cause you to be faithful. I want all the blessed people of the Lord to put your hands together and tell God, thank you. Thank you for blessing me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for loving me. God bless your new birth. We love you. We'll see you. Make sure you get in on this bond covenant and sow your seed and the blessing of the Lord will cover your life. Amen. We'll see you Sunday morning at 930. God bless you. Hey! <laughs> it's time for our video announcements. New birth, are you ready to become an agent of change to prepare for our Bond 700 giving campaign on Sunday, October 24th? Take these seven steps today. Step one, pray about your commitment level. 7000 1700 $700, or $70, or your best bond seed ending in seven. Step two, make your commitment. Text NB Bond 700 to 71441 or visit wearenewbirth.org forward slash bond 700. Step three, join our Bond 700 seven minute prayer call every Tuesday morning at 7 a.m. Dial in using the number below. Step four, join us weekly as Dr. Bryant ministers his new series, Word is Bond. Step five, begin fulfilling your commitment at wearenewbirth.org forward slash give and select Bond 700 giving campaign. Step six, pray daily about your covenant with God and others. Step seven, be of service to God and others. Through your sacrificial giving, we can change lives, we can change communities, and we can change the world. Coming soon, Bond 700 merch will be available at our Call to Cocker bookstore. Also, pick up a copy of the Book of the Month, Tribes by Seth Godin. Also, please join the Book of the Month online virtual meeting on Tuesday, September 28th from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m. Please visit wearenewbirth.org for more information. Emerging Generations and the Exceptional Kids Ministry is hosting its first online summit for parents with special needs children on Saturday, October 2nd at 11 a.m. Guest speakers include Lisa Sims, Dina Kane, Teresa Wright, and more. Learn about the resources Resources available to you. Register to attend using the link below. Join us online on Sunday, October 10th, as we worship in pink attire in recognition of National Breast Cancer Awareness Month. Our worship service is in celebration of breast cancer survivors and dedicated to support early detection of breast cancer through screenings for men and women. Our Discovering Intimacy Kingdom Relationships class is a new, powerful, life affirming class that is designed for everyone. Learn how to relate with one another and understand your God-given need for intimacy. Classes will begin on Sunday, October 3rd from noon to 1 p.m. The Discovering Intimacy book is now available in our Call to Conquer bookstore. Please visit wearenewbirth.org backslash events for more information. New Birth is hosting Bishop Neil Ellis and the Global United Fellowship Gathering Virtual Conference October 13th through the 15th. Guest speakers include our pastor, Dr. Jamal Harrison Bryant. Bishop
Bishop Ellis, Bishop Sean Bell, and many more. Get your tickets today. Register using the link below. And that's going to do it for today's video announcements.